Doing life. It's an odd figure of speech I heard sometimes at a Southern Baptist church I grew up in. Yeah. I, of all people, was raised Southern Baptist. Anyway, doing life means exactly what it sounds like, going about life in an active way. It's essentially referring to fellowship, but something a bit more intentional and meaningful. Something beyond what it seems to be on the surface. I kept thinking of that specific coupling of words, doing life, while watching Mike Mills' 20th Century Women. Plus, maybe the only film to feature punk rock, Annette Benning, and conversations about clitoral stimulation. And if it isn't the only one of its kind, it's probably the best. To say 20th Century Women follows a defined plot is a bit of a stretch. What sets the film in motion is an older single mother named Dorothea Fields, played by the incomparable Benning, in late 1970s Santa Barbara, trying to reconnect with her teenage son, played by Lucas Jade Zuman. What better way to reach out to your kid than enlisting the help of one of your tenants, punk rock loving 20-something photographer Greta Gerwig, and your son's bestie Elle Fanning. This story serves as a catalyst to explore how all these people interact with each other, and how they discover themselves in the process. It doesn't quite reach an end game, but that's sort of the point. Writer-director Mike Mills made this film as a tribute to his own mother, and you feel that influence. To get the quote-unquote bad out of the way, I have a few quibbles of some of the editing and transition choices. Like this. And it can rely a lot less on shot reverse shot. And while these are just personal preferences, they keep me from calling this a directorial triumph. But Mills on screenwriting duty is faultless. The dialogue cuts through BS without ever feeling trite. The humor sneaks up on you with characters surprising you at every turn. The intricate characters on display sometimes threaten to fall into stereotypes, but Mills subverts them. I won't go into detail so as not to spoil it, but it's definitely a treat. Although Benning's desire to reconnect with her son meets a sort of resolution, it's not an endgame. But it does meet a sort of resolution that feels real. I initially saw the film's backgrounding of characters via narration and photos as a bit superfluous and distracting. Show don't tell is something we often see and hear in regard to film, and that's true. If a film can convey information effectively without directly telling us, it's usually all the better for it. At least when it comes to exposition. But the more I thought about it, the more I admired its refusal to explain certain characters in more readily accepted ways. An argument against the narration and photo bit, I suppose, would be to say that it distracts from the story. But this isn't a story, not really. It's a hysterical, tragic, beautiful, messy intertwining of lives at the heart of it all. And Mills gets exceptional work from his cast. Benning walks away with this, in Birkenstocks, as a vulnerable yet strong woman whose behavior confuses those around her and sometimes even herself. While doing almost nothing, Benning does everything. She charms, frustrates, confuses, makes you howl even. I guess I've been a bad gay for not really realizing it, but Benning is everything. Scenes at the Fields table recall Benning's big dinner scene in Lisa Chilodinka's The Kids Are Alright from 2010. When Benning sits down for a meal, you're in for an acting masterclass. Gerwig and Fanning lift their characters' respective baggage while also feeling very much of the time period. Gerwig's often nonchalant line readings beautifully juxtapose her softer moments. Fanning conveys confused teenage angst seemingly effortlessly. Can she and Haley Steinfeld make a high school comedy together? It's cool to see Gerwig and Fanning, two of the faces of New Hollywood, shine so brightly in the same film. Admittedly, Zuman gets little to really do as Mills wrote him as a surrogate, and therefore essentially as a device. Billy Crudup's Potter tenant serves to move between characters too, but bonus points for Rogan Hotness, especially in a particular scene with Gerwig where he repeats I'm sorry. Both actors do manage to feel like real people instead of devices. If you're a screenwriter who wants to write a script about family, do what this movie does. If you want to play a concerned mother you want to listen to the talking heads with, and not a stock character, Benning all the way. While some filmmaking choices didn't work for me personally, 20th Century Women is a darkly hilarious women-centric drama about love, family, and how we do life that rarely comes along. 